Welcome to the space. So happy to be here with all of you today. Um, yeah, so I feel like the good opportunity here is that I am covering some of the same material that I covered at the retreat, but as you probably know, no transmission can come through the same way twice. And so there's going to be extra different information that comes through and uh, opening up the Oracle and allowing these um, transmissions to come through is like my favorite pastime because I'm really getting the front row seat and I'm getting to enjoy the energy that comes through as well. And so um, just about 20 minutes ago, one of my best friends um, sent me a couple of links about orgasmic birthing, which is not a concept that I've really heard other people talk about before. I might have heard the term just like a couple of times. And as some of you might know, I am carrying a child at the moment. And so um, as my exploration on this planet, I have been a lot surrounding the research of sexuality and understanding creation um, and how that, how those things have been distorted and how the distortions of those things in our own systems perpetuate this false reality that we have in the world. And so um, being and carrying a child and being a interdimensional portal for another being to come through into physicality is really um, offering me some really deep and interesting insights into these things. And actually, as um, my friend sent me these articles, and I don't think that anything ever happens by accident. I think that when there are these transmissions, things will come into the reality right around the time they start so that we can contemplate and think about these subjects together. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so many of you know that the thing I love talking about the most is creation magic and the restoration of human consciousness and our relationship with the universe and the reality. And so, of course, the moment of birth is the first moment that we're entering into the world. And when I was reading these articles and watching this um, preview of this movie called Orgasmic Birth, The Best Kept Secret or something, it was basically um, talking about how there are women that experience ecstatic bliss and actually orgasms as they're giving birth to children and that there is a huge push for this fear agenda um, of depicting the birth process as something that is full of anxiety full of pain um, that i think that this movie was probably made by some uh, holistic health people <laughs> because they depicted the hospital in a really kind of bad way um, and that was interesting to, to see, but from what they were basically saying, you know, the women in the hospitals, especially in the older times, I think that they are actually natural birthing rooms and stations in a lot of modern hospitals now, thank goodness. But if we think about that process, the birthing process and how the women is in kind of a wrong angle against gravity, and then they have to push really hard, and then there's different drugs to numb the body through this very sacred moment in time when a being is entering into the physical reality. This is like the biggest, one of the biggest ceremonies one can have in life um, if we have this understanding and this uh, reverence, respect for life itself. I'm just waving this hairbrush around because I really need to brush my hair. See, I'm just hiding it over here. <laughs> so, um, why is this important? Well, um, in today's talk, we're going to be talking and moving deeper into this understanding of creation magic and how our human vessel um, directly relates and interacts with the physical reality to create physical reality outside of ourself. Um, how the creator and the created are in this eternal dance of infinity um, where we're continually witnessing and interacting and co-creating um, all that is outside of ourself from the vibrations and the geometries that, um, of which is inside of ourself, right? 
Um, this is very, this is a, a kind of mechanical understanding of energy. This is something that the ancient Taoist people really um, studied and understood. And I do come from a lineage of Taoist Tantra practitioners who were women. And so I have a lot of guides that um, come from that lineage that hold my hand as I come into these understandings. And I'm able to, um, from that place of understanding things, from that perspective, look upon our current reality and its degradation and kind of come to these deductions about certain things. Um, so we are going to talk briefly about the different kinds of implants and different kinds of things like that. But I feel like it's really important for me to lay this foundation about um, the mechanics of creation and, and how that operates inside of our own body because if we can truly understand that if we can truly activate our awareness of that um, then we can begin to activate ourselves as a sovereign creator being we can move into energetic sovereignty and as we begin to do that then um, the clearing of different kinds of implants and distortions become much easier um, and so i'm going to kind of open up the space as we give that discussion um, and then in the second half of this transmission we're going to do a group healing um, and that's a time when we'll get to actually viscerally experience distortions and implants being cleared and removed uh, through the use of this energy um, that we are talking about and is the energy of our own soul is the energy of the aliveness that penetrates all things is this energy of our own connection to the divine and the universe that is the most powerful and potent energy that there is and so how humans access creative energy in our human physical body it is through our sexual organs through our sexual um, energy the sexual energy is a correlation and a direct um, equation to creative raw cosmic energy this is how energy flows through the cosmos and flows through our physical vessel to be cultivated to be utilized by us humans in our physical bodies so in the Taoist cosmology there are three main energy centers um, and at the retreat I had someone ask me about um, the different levels of perceiving our energy body so they're like i think they phrased the question like are chakras real or are they psychic weapons <laughs> or something like this and i had to laugh because um i think that while there's a lot of different schools of teachings um that as long as something is helpful to us in the way that it describes things we can continue to um allow it to function in whatever place it has in our intelligence and so while I talk about these three centers, you can also perceive the body as having seven centers or nine centers or 13 centers or however many centers you're deciding to perceive through at a particular moment. They don't negate the existence of other systems of perceiving the energy system. They all coexist, all coexist at the same time, kind of like we have a, a circulatory system and we have a skin organ system and we have a skeletal system and they all exist together and they're all just different layers of seeing ourselves. so i really enjoy working with this three center the dantian system because it seems to make most sense to me especially when we apply it to this idea of manifestation so how I understand manifestation is the materialization into physicality of intent or energy or thought. And so we can say that the human vessel have materialized, have been manifested into physical reality um, through this original angelic intent of experiencing in the physical. And so in our personal lives, when we say we're manifesting something, it means that we're making something appear or making something come in to our reality to be experienced. Um, and I find that a lot of New Age manifestation teachings, um, they are uh, not complete. 
because the majority of them only tells you to use one center. For example, they, there's a lot of teaching surrounding tantric manifestation um, meditations where they're, you know, you're, you're channeling the sexual energy and there might be some visualizing going on, right? Um, but see, there, that's using the lower Dantian and the upper Dantian. And then there's the law of attraction visualization techniques where we're only using the higher faculties the third eye to visualize to get what we want well when um i like to organize and make use of all three of my major dantian energy systems to make sure that everything is in alignment before i begin to manifest because this is how we avoid receiving the fine prints of manifestation that we didn't really want. Um, and so for, um, for example, um, I've had stories of people who really wanted to manifest a fancy car, um, but they um, might still have a wound in their lower body that, you know, says that they're either not worthy of it or that, um, yeah, let's say that they're not worthy of it. So then they might actually manifest the car, but because they still have this distortion of unworthiness, they'll also create a reality where they either lose the car or have a situation where that unworthiness expresses itself in the reality. Um, this is why a lot of new age people are kind of having a hard time right now in life. I've been noticing over the Scorpio season that this Scorpio season is really savage. Um, and if at any point we are dabbling in magic, we're dabbling in expressing ourselves as a creator being, but we're not doing the work, we're not clearing out ourself and restoring our divinity inside, then we're really going to be manifesting powerfully the um, subtext that we didn't intend to bring in, but are written in our energy body, if that makes sense. So I find that this system is really important in recognizing where we are on our path. It's important to understand and recognize where we are in the now um, so that we can actually make incremental progress um, towards becoming more whole. Um, and it's not really about particularly getting anywhere. It's not about becoming enlightened or becoming realized and turning into a rainbow and disappearing out of the space of the planet or anything. Um, personally, I don't find that that is the goal or there's a goal. Um, I find that it's actually quite simple that we can take steps to really love ourselves and take care of ourselves so that we are steadily, incrementally moving ourselves towards a reality that feels more sovereign, more empowered, more ourselves, more embodied, right? And those are the things that we actually really want to experience is our own soul expressing through our body. And so this is also the process um, which we begin to um, experience our true soul incarnating into the body. Whereas, you know, before we woke up, we might have spent a long time living as a fragment of ourself or an artificial expression of ourself that is a conglomerate of what society and our family um, and our peers uh, projected onto us. So that whole process requires a lot of time of disintegration and dissolution so that all of those artificial parts can kind of dissolve and fall away and create space in our body for our true self to actually begin to come in. So as we're first waking up, it might even feel like we have no idea who we are or even that there are foreign energies living inside of ourselves. Like we don't even know, like it feels like we're our own stranger, right? Um, and that process of coming into intimacy with ourself is also a process of coming into intimacy with what we're creating. Again, there is a very intimate, infinite connection between the internal and the external. And I'm just going to bring up my chart here. So I apologize if some of you have seen this during my um, 
my talk already during the retreat, but I'm promised that there's something new that is coming through that I'm very excited about. Um, so I just want to kind of lay the foundation here before we move into that. It's very juicy. <laughs> well, I think it's juicy because this is my favorite stuff. The foundation and the mechanics of creation. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to share a screen here. So one moment. Okay. So I will send this out as a PDF. Um, actually, I got to upload all the videos overnight last night. So I'm caught up. Um, in my uploading. So after tomorrow night, I'll be able to send out the link with all of the videos. And I'm going to include the PDFs that I showed during the presentations then. So this is how um, I've been guided to break down the three major creation centers of our body. Um, this is literally how human energy have been hijacked to create an artificial reality that does not serve us. It is the distortions that are in these three centers that I've broken down here, which have allowed um, the fallen, distorted um, energies of separation to take hold and to anchor into our 3D reality and manifest into the crazy, crazily organized <laughs> um, hell realm that we have. Right. So uh, I, I use the word hell here and I use the word realm because I don't really believe that there is, let's say, a heaven and a hell. It's like on a spectrum and the spectrum is our experience, is our consciousness. And so, you know, maybe some days it could feel like we're in hell. Um, and this is a real frequency energy. <laughs> a lot of entities thrive in this environment, um, but it is also perceived um as like a degradation to life, a disrespect to um, the other and all that it is sacred, right? So when we look at our world today, and I don't mean like our personal world, I really mean the collective reality. Um, and you'll find that I will talk about the collective reality a little bit in this way, but I really want to actually focus on our empowerment. I want to just bring our awareness there for a brief moment, um, but I also want to make sure that we understand that what we focus on is what we're creating, and so we can just be witness to what has had what had happened, so that we can choose something differently. So we can recognize that there is something that needs to be done. There's some change that needs to come through, and it is then. Um, transformed into fuel for our mission, right? Um, and so I want you to just keep the mass population in mind because um, I personally feel like I'm on this journey right now to create bridges for the masses to heal. And that means I can't assume that the masses are going to speak my language, that they're going to understand the new age um, articulation about things. And so as a multidimensional intelligent being, I use the word genius, that we all are, as we tune into the multidimensional intelligence of our soul, um, we can creatively come up with projects and ideas and medicine and bridges for people to access this information. Right. And so uh, I like to say that I am here for the liberation of all beings, not just some beings, especially the beings who um, have been deceived for a long time and they don't even really know that their free will had been co-opted. Um, and so this is a really good system to recognize where we are collectively. Um, both in the New Age societies and culture and in mass culture. So, um, as you can see, there are three main energy centers in the creative system of the body. Um, 
Um, let's see, we're going to start with the lower Dantian on the bottom here. So in order for us to create, all three of these centers have to be working together in unison, in coherence, in agreement with each other, working in one. And so the function of the lower Dantian is to um, bring in this raw sexual creative energy that fuels the creation. This is the battery, this is the power that comes through to make what we want happen. So we experience that as desire, as yearning, as a passion, as this creative raw power. And as the powerhouse of our creative process, it's a source of infinite raw sexual creative energy. I want you to think about how much energy can actually come through here because I'm really experiencing this these days. You know, where every couple of weeks, this like new being inside me is like an inch or two bigger. And it's like, I'm literally like building new parts, building new hair and organs. <laughs> I just love that baby picture right now that Zelma has as her profile picture. But um, anyway, you just really get to viscerally experience how much creative energy is available to us. Um, and, you know, I know that I have these contracts with these star beings to bring them in. And I also know that um, uh, they are very specific beings that are my family um, as far as star beings goes. But I also understand that humanity have been deceived for a long, long time to believe that the creation of other beings is the only way that we can create that to procreate and to you know get married make a child make a home you know keep working at your job so you can sustain this family um that in a way is a hijacking and it's a, a lie because it, humans have been um told to believe that that is the only thing that we can create and when we spend all of our creative energy um doing that our entire life to feed um, you know, our survival or whatever it is that we think, as well as engage in, you know, distorted relationships and suffering and pain. And under this understanding that those things are supposed to be normal and just a part of life, we're actually allowing that energy to be just siphoned and leaked out of our body. This is why the majority of people have a lot of dreams and desires that they want to create things, but they don't actually get around to it. And it's because our sexual energy is not cultivated, um, that there are uh, hooks and cords that um, we're leaking energy into other, our exes, our previous relationships, our um, high school projects that, you know, we haven't worked on in like eight years that we shouldn't even be thinking about, but we're still energetically connected to, right? There's a lot of these little hooks in the false reality that make us feel like we have to do things and that we are a slave to those things and we have to give our energy to it in order to survive or something. So um, when we're blocked up, we can be blocked up by our traumas. You know, the lower Dantian, the lower belly is where we keep all of our ancestral and personal and emotional um, traumas. So, you know, shame and guilt surrounding sex um, and trapped lower vibrational emotions, which hinder the flow of creative energy. Um, so I know that I talk about this a lot, but pornography sucks. And um, pornography and the um, institutions, which uh, let's just say strip clubs. I was trying to find a fancy word to say that. And I was like, I'm going to say strip clubs. Um, so I am not in judgment at all of the individuals who are involved in those careers. I feel that is more that the society had set us up to degrade ourselves. And so I have great compassion and love and acceptance for all the beings who are involved in the creation of those things. Um, but I do feel like the system was set up to perpetuate itself. And so we have to recognize that even though those things are deemed as normal in our society, they are not normal. 
um, if we think about the ascended civilizations that have um, beautiful, resplendent sex rituals, which it's intended not to bring arousal to individuals, not to satisfy individual lust, but actually to uh, bring in this beautiful sexual energy to be in love and reverence and respect of that energy as a representation of all of creation. I mean, yes, people did do that. People do have that level of appreciation and love for the universe. Um, this is actually the correct coding of beings. Um, and so if you put that side to side with the pornography and the pornographic so media that is available for our little children to watch, um, that a lot of those things were didn't come about by accident, okay? And uh, I you know, like to talk about the time when I went to the Ariana Grande concert and saw with my own eyes that there are beings who are manipulating human bodies to perpetuate certain agendas. And the sexual misery agenda is a real thing. Um, and so, of course, that is created to, again, hijack our sexual energy so that we are not powerful enough. We don't have enough um, CPU and we don't have enough energy to actually blast through and create a better reality, right? So this is why it's important for us to actually talk about these distortions in this way. Not that we're giving it any power by talking about it, but actually by recognizing that our power is inherent in our energy centers and it's only when we recognize where we're leaking energy that we can reclaim that consciously and thus be able to channel that energy into creating what we want and so the second center here then is the middle dantian or the heart um on the throat ish kind of like a big center right here the high heart the top of the solar plexus and so I like to say that this center is our center of motivation for our creative process. This is where we experience purity and love and devotion and morality. And so um, this is a center that we check in with ourselves about what our motivation is behind what it is that we want to create. And we can also see then that there's a lot of false programs that are given to us by the society that distort our motivation. So incorrect ex, um, expression, unconditional love is the motivation of our creative processes, our devotion to our service or creation, which benefits our own vibration and all touched by a creation. This is our purpose and our, um, our purpose as a humanity on this planet, right? Um, when we express ourselves, are we doing it out of love, out of respect, and out of a desire to make things better for all beings? Not, not just humans, but all the other creatures that live on this planet as well. And so in the false reality, of course, there are false programs of giving and taking, conditional love, motivations of lower vibrations of jealousy, competition, power, of course, lack. Um, if we're motivated to do something because it'll make us look better than our parents or if we're doing something because we're scared that we're if we don't do that thing then we're going to disappoint people if we're doing something and we're doing it because um, we want to get lots of money and have fame and be fulfilled in that kind of way or are we completely creating something out of this desire to bring love and beauty and coherence into the world, right? Very clear. We can very clearly discern where we are at with this center. And of course, then it's easy to feel into, you know, why do we want that fancy car? Or for some of us, or why do we want that big piece of land that we can create a beautiful magic school and, um, healing center for all of the beloved <laughs> um, brothers and sisters in all the world, right? It's just like different frequency trajectories. You all understand. I'm just breaking it down. So it's easier to um, communicate with maybe your clients or your family members as well. Coming into clarity and lucidity about it all. 
So finally, we're moving into the higher Dantian, the spirit mind. Here's where we access our imagination, inspiration, and dreams. Um, so this is really the part where we get to intellectualize and really move into complexity about the specifics of what we want to create. Um, and of course, this also have to do with belief systems and, and inspiration and where the idea is coming from. Um, and so when it is aligned, it feels like our creative process is a co-creational effort between ourself, our soul, and the divine spirit. And we feel this great interconnectedness and just the certainty that it is our purpose, that is something we're meant to do. And our inner children are happy and we can just be in this place of play, of really imagining what we'd like to create because we already know that we have infinite raw creative energy and that our motivation is unconditional love. And so this frees us from any fear um, of not being able to do certain things and we can just run wild with our dreams, right? And so, of course, this center is heavily distorted by video games and uh, TV <laughs> and uh, the distortions of electronics and um, programs that our parents pass down to us, like, you know, get a job, you know, be a slave. Sexuality is dirty and shameful and sinful. And all of these things kind of, all these beliefs then shut down our sexual energy again, right? So we don't have access to that power, so we can't create what we want. And of course, some of the other distortions that exist in the heart are what is again related to the sexual misery programming that, you know, love is pain. <laughs> and when you fall in love in this world, um, it'll end up in pain or people will cheat on you or any of those things, you know, those confusing belief systems about owning other people, that pain can only come from this under this reality of owning other people which we don't ever right okay so as we can see very clearly that the elite probably were aware of creation magic we're aware of how humans create reality um, because as you can see also they have been very specific about the places and the programs to install into humans from the distortions and the degradation of sexuality to the implanted ideas about how relationships have to be um, to the mass indoctrination of what is reality and the disconnection from source. And don't even get me started about the different, you know, distorted schools of spirituality, also known as churches and, you know, religion. So very, very specific implantations of ideas and distortions to keep a person from actually accessing our organic soul energy in ourself to become sovereign creator beings which all people are right how do you actually control the divine sovereign creator being by wiping its memory of all of these things that it is inherent in themselves about their capacity to create and mind brainwashing them into believing that they're not that through these things that we're talking about right here. So um, I do want to, I'm going to pause for a second and kind of close this. Does anyone have any questions here? Do, 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 do. Okay, Whew. so the transmission today have a lot to do with really opening up our psychic senses and recognizing how our own body and vessel and consciousness is so intimately connected to the fabric of reality. And how that connection is what makes us a creator being that we're literally able to project our energy into the reality. 
So what is the difference between the heart and the high heart? It's just a frequency. How I experience it is that the heart um, is more feeling like mammalian love. It's this very warm and earthy and mammal familial love that's really important that's like really anchored into the physical vessel and the somatic somatic body and then the high heart seems to feel um like more of accessing a quantum divine spiritual love and of course they both have to operate it's not like one is better than the other it's just as a human we're complex beings we're both a divine creature and a mammal <laughs> so both are equally important shanna says are implants a belief system only can you um kind of I'm not really fully understanding the question. It says, are implants on a belief system level only? And then it says, hat oath. <laughs> so just, um, I'm going to assume that you're asking if implants are a belief. Um, so yes and no. Um, how I perceive the yes part is that implants, some implants, um, are created by our own thoughts and energy. It's just that this is a question like, are thoughts things, right? And to me, thoughts are things because thoughts are made of palpable energy and they can literally create in different dimensions geometries and shapes and pull energy together through the imagination. So if we're talking about um, are other dimensional energies real or is it belief? Um, that is a different conversation, right? So um, when I'm working on somebody and I scan their body, say this person has a belief system and the belief is um, sex is sinful. Um, and this is just something that they have inherited from their family or their church and they just learned this from a very young age. Now, Obviously, to me, sex is the most beautiful expression of creation because it is literally the act of complete reverence and honor of all of life, right? That is my belief of what sex is. But if somebody has the misbelief that sex is a sin, then there can, that belief can literally materialize as a energetic blockage you know i've seen literal metal looking plates <laughs> that literally cut off circulation of sexual energy and that is a i would call that an implant but that is kind of a self-created implant through the belief system now i have also no not all implants because i have also seen energetic intrusions in the energy body that were put there through astral abductions or military experimentation or military um, technology blasts or even technology um, that we have. So when I say implants is actually, I guess that depends on if you believe um, if energy and interdimensional things are real. So, so implants are put into us via belief systems. Yes. So Yes and no, right? Um, some of them are self-placed. It's like if we, our, our consciousness is so powerful that we can literally create removed organs. So if we really believe that we are, um, uh, what's that called? Like complete, it's like we are um, less than divine or we are subservient to higher beings then some people literally manifest, you know, heavy blocks in their crown chakras that look like implants, um, but it's a subconscious creation. And so this is very much related to creating light technology because that is creating energy unconsciously. And then you can use that function of the imagination to create positive and functional implants or just, you know, extra light technology that helps the system function, if that makes sense. You're welcome. So if anyone has another question, 
just write it through. Whew. Okay. So this retreat and this masterclass is a lot about lucidity. Um, and because we're multidimensional beings, it is not a one-sided discussion. We can't just talk about how light and incredible and made of love we are. Um, and, you know, we can't really talk about how multidimensional we are if we avoid subjects of discussion that might seem daunting or scary. Um, and so coming into perfect lucidity is the ability to be so anchored in the reality that we are a divine creator being that witnessing anything will not change that state of being. And so only from that place of centeredness in this deep, peaceful love and recognition of ourself as a divine being, only from that place can we go and really hold space for the transmutation of even the heaviest energies on this planet. And so the way that we come into perfect lucidity is really by anchoring that divinity in ourself and coming into perfect clarity about everything that had happened on this planet so we can be most accurately and precisely of service. So right now we're really talking about um, moving beyond this intellectual, conceptual understanding of us being creator beings and actually recognizing that there is an energetic mechanics to this and the ancient people have been studying this forever. Um, so the thing that I really wanted to get into today is this theory that I've had for a long time. And I say it's a theory because there's no way that I can really prove this, obviously. But I also say it from a place of um, having a very visceral experience of the mechanics of creation inside my own vessel. And then comparatively looking at the um, suffering that happens on this planet um, and seeing how it's actually directly connected to the mass control systems that are present and so what brought this up is again that video of orgasmic birth which totally makes sense to me i feel that my soul the way that my soul experiences creation is that as this big beautiful magnificent expansive thing um and so that reflected in the 3d reality would be the birth giving process. So now I find that there's a correlation between the distorted um, spiritual teachings. Actually, Buddha and I had a great laugh about this at the Vipassana retreat because at some point the teacher of the meditation was like, the universe is made of misery and we'll spend our whole lives. <laughs> resolving that misery and I was like that is not how I experienced my life or the universe and I came from there <laughs> and so Buddha was like I never said that <laughs> I was like I don't know what's going on then but um there is a psyop here to make us believe that incessant suffering is just a part of life and I'm not talking about you know the depth and the beauty of grief and heartbreak and things like that that is not evil okay that is not i wouldn't even call those things dark they're just different aspects of reality that might be not enjoyable in the moment but ultimately bring more depth to life so i'm really talking about the relentless pain and suffering that people go through just because they have belief systems that they were taught by the control system or that you know the belief system that we have to incessantly work on ourselves really hard and suffer to become accepted by god you know these beliefs are distorted in my belief and so when i heard this teaching from this Indian yogi master that the universe is made of misery I immediately you know first of all recognize that that is a distorted teaching meant to 
um, encapsulate and capture people in an old paradigm religion. And second of all, if we think about birth giving, and if we think about the cervix as a gateway, and it truly, truly is, because I've been just feeling into this, I mean, a lot, I spend a lot of time just being with the process of growing this child, spend a lot of time communicating with him. Um, he's showed up in dreams and visions almost daily, um, even before he was conceived. I mean, for a year we knew that he was coming. And so I've spent a lot of time just like building that bridge between realms and feeling into how you know honorable and beautiful and sacred it is of a bond between a mother and a being that we're being a bridge for. And so that is, um, to me, extremely normal. That is something that I feel that humans have done always in the history of the shamanic societies that lived on this planet for as long as the earth existed. Um, and of course, probably in other star systems as well. Um, but the fact that that spiritual aspect of birthing and, and child creating is missing in the reality is a symptom of this uh, mass degradation of life. And so when we think about the child's first ever major initiation of really being brought from the inner dream realms into this physical reality, the cervix is the gate that the child comes through. And if we know that some women have the reality of being in absolute orgasmic bliss as this is happening, do you feel like it is perhaps different of an experience for babies who come through those portals versus babies who come through portals where the mom's been given an epidural, there is mass chaos in the hospital room, and mom is in pain, screaming and pushing as if, you know, giving birth is the uh, is a sickness. So obviously, it's very different. And that, that process has been studied in, in many healing modalities that go back to that process, has been shown that that is highly traumatic and so for me, I like to think about the cervix as an entrance point into the reality. It is an entrance into heaven, or it is an entrance into hell. And of course, I myself was given birth to, and I think probably all of us, and I'm sure some of us had easy births, but many of us experienced, our parents probably experienced difficult birth. I mean, I can tell you I was definitely in hell for the first <laughs> you know, 18 years of my life in the false matrix. So um, this is a very, very deep discussion. And I'm having this discussion because I feel that we are all able to anchor in our heart in a way that allow us to be witness to the depth of the distortions in our society. So we can really ground into that. So, um, you know, once these realizations kind of come to me really naturally, because I have a lot of lineage masters around me and, you know, being pregnant, this baby is a freaking master. He's like kicking my ass every day. He's just teaching me about natural vortex, earth energetics. Um, and he's already teaching me so, 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 so much. Um, and so this is like kind of a, a collaboration already um, of me and this child of kind of solidifying these um, theories because it's all different. It's, it was like before I was just postulating about other people's experiences and now I'm having a very, very deeply profound um, relationship to this being and this whole process and just like really experiencing and sitting in the profoundness of life, um, of creation. And, and then really that just brings me into this deep place of accepting and recognizing the mission really clearly and the mission isn't really to perfect myself and and you know I mean it is but it's like I'm, I'm, I am I am perfect I am just learning to really sit and come into myself come into my body because I was created perfect 
and <laughs> so to me the mission isn't to ascend out of my body into a place where I can then be an ascended master is more about coming into mastery of what this vessel truly is and what I truly am as a human on this planet, which is a creator being that is capable of creating heaven or hell. And when I fully recognize that power, it becomes this game. Um, it's like the advanced game board of the coolest, most epic game ever, um, <laughs> where we have this task of creating heaven on earth. And the way we do that is by coming into energetic sovereignty and mastery of our own creative system so that we're able to literally become a vessel, a channel between realms to bring this creational energy into this reality. And without coming into full lucidity and understanding of all of those things, we can't actually fully clear all of those misbeliefs and distortions and programs and viruses out of our own system. And without doing that and clearing everything out of our own system, then we ourselves are actually perpetuating and co-creating the false reality. Every time that we make a decision and move our body and um, create something that is not in alignment with that vibration of pure source creation, we are co-creating that false reality. And of course, that has a spectrum to it, right? Some people really just create things to mess with other people like Ariana Grande. <laughs> she really knows what she's doing and she's doing it. She's like, I'm going to mind control these six-year-olds, believe they're sex slaves so that I can be the queen of the world. She is literally doing that, okay? Now, if we ourselves are like, well, I'm going to just stay in my job for five more years because then I'll have enough money and then I'll be safe and, and then I'll get on my mission or whatever. You know, that is us making an action in fear. So while there's a wide spectrum here, um, I really encourage us to really step forth because when we create in co-creation with the universe, miracles happen and i know that all of us know that i think these messages is just really an energy that's coming through an energy of support and warmth and knowingness being deeply anchored in that magical reality of co-creationship with ourself and our higher other self <laughs> So let me know if you have any questions.